Hi everybody, this is Joel Kennedy with Kennedy Violins. Have you ever wanted to change the tailpiece on your violin? Well, it's actually not that hard. Today, I'll show you how. Hi guys, so today I'm gonna to show you how to switch out the tailpiece on a violin. Now this procedure will work just fine for viola or cello. And a common replacement that people would like to make would be either to change this style of tailpiece, which has an independent fine tuner in here, or they've got maybe four of them in there, with a tailpiece like this with the uh, fine tuners that are all built in. Or people will want to do the opposite, right? A violin may have a tailpiece with four built-in fine tuners, and to decide, you know, I want a pretty wood tailpiece, and one with just got one fine tuner for the E, right? So pretty common. Either way, it's the same procedure. Okay, so now the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to loosen all the strings so you can detach them from the end of the tailpiece. Now, you don't wanna take all the strings off. You're just gonna loosen all of the pegs so you have enough slack in the strings that you can remove the strings from the tailpiece. Now, your bridge may wanna fall down, so you wanna be careful to hold your bridge. Also, during this process, the sound post, the piece of you know, dowel-like wood that's inside your violin, you don't want that to fall over. So you wanna make sure you don't bump your violin really hard or anything like that, because if that, that sound post falls down, well now you probably gotta take it into a violin shop and have them put your sound post back in for you. So be very careful, once you loosen all the strings, you don't wanna knock that sound post out. So be, handle your violin gently. Okay, so I've got all the strings loose and I'm removing the bridge and I'm gonna put that somewhere nice and safe. Okay, so now we can take all of these strings and simply pull them out of the tailpiece. Okay, it's pretty easy. And we leave this, those strings uh, inside the pegs. Now to remove this um, tailpiece, we're simply gonna push it, we're gonna lift it a little bit over so it, doesn't, so it clears the saddle. And we're just gonna push it towards this end pin. Okay, my end pin actually came out. We're gonna push it towards the end pin and then lift it out. Okay, so I'll show you that one more time. Let's say that the, the cord is around here. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna push that tailpiece out and then we're gonna lift that cord around the, the uh, tailpiece and then simply remove it. Now, sometimes because of clearance issues, you may not be able to push this out and, and get, the, get it off your uh, end pin. So in that instance, you would actually have to remove the end pin first, you know, and then pull the tailpiece out and then put the end pin uh, back in. But usually you won't have to do that. Now the next step is that you'll want to put your new tailpiece in, but you may have to adjust this cord here to make sure it's the right length, okay? Now the way you adjust that is on the bottom here, you'll see that you've got, it's just, a, it's just threaded and you've got these little brass screws here. So if you want the cord to be longer, then you would just loosen these uh, nuts, right? Counterclockwise, lefty loosey, righty tighty. You would actually loosen them, and then that would make this actually, in effect, longer. Now, how do you know what length this cord needs to be? Well, you want to uh, slip it under here and put it on the end pin. And to slip this tailpiece underneath, I usually just push it up with my index finger so it clears the saddle here and then just push it through, it's really easy, okay? Then put it on the end pin. Now, idealistically, you want the end of this tail piece to be flush with your chin rest here, okay? So now what I usually do is I actually will make, make it stick out just a tiny bit, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, because I know by the time I get the tension on the strings that um, it's, going to, it's going to stretch this cord. So since this actually is about perfect with the chin rest, I'm going to shorten this cord by, by turning these, these nuts here uh, clockwise, okay? To, to, to make this cord a little shorter. And then I'm gonna stick it back on here, put it around the, the, the uh, end pin and pull. Okay, now it's a little bit longer, it sticks out a little bit. I don't know if the camera can see it. it, sticks out a little bit. So when I tighten this violin up, it'll be almost perfectly flush with the, uh, the end of my chin rest. Okay, now the next step is you 
have your tailpiece in, and now you just want to put the ends of your, of your strings into the tailpiece, okay? So you're just gonna go one by one and uh, make sure that the strings are not tangled up or on top of each other or something like that. Now, something I wanna point out. Now, sometimes when you're putting your strings back in, you will find that the, the string on the end of the, the, the winding on the end of the string is so thick that the string may not want to fit inside this groove. If that's the case, get like a pen or a pencil or a pen or a paper clip or whatever. And um, I said pen twice, didn't I? And then, uh, and then just simply help just push this um, ball in and then push it through the groove and it'll fit. Now it's the same situation if you have this type of tailpiece. Sometimes the balls won't want to fit into the holes very well. Just get something like a pen and just push that ball in. Okay, so we got that uh, the G in. Okay, now we'll just do the the D. And the strings are nice and loose, but they're still attached to the to the peg. All right, so here's the A. And here is the E. Okay. So the next step is we will want to put our bridge back in. Now, bridges are asymmetrical. They, 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 they have a certain way that they go in, and of course you have to place them in the, the right spot on your violin. I did another video called How to Set Up Your Violin. I put a link below if you wanna check that out. I go into a little bit more detail on how to uh, put, put a, a bridge in properly. So for now, I'll just uh, kinda give you half the information, okay? So the high side of the bridge is the G side, and so what we'll wanna do is we'll actually want to put a little bit of tension on one of our strings, let's say the G string, okay? And so we wanna put a little bit of tension on that string because it's gonna hold our bridge while we position uh, our other strings. Okay, so now I'm just tightening that, that G down, not very much, but just enough that it's holding that um, bridge into place. And of course we're putting that bridge, these notches on the F hole, we're gonna place it in between those notches, okay? Now we're going to uh, tighten the E string. So the way I do it is I always do the outside strings first. Now make sure your strings, when you rewind them, you rewind them against the side of the scroll box. I have a video about that called Slipping Pegs. You can check that out. I also have uh, the link to that video down below as well. But when you rewind your strings on the pegs, make sure you direct those strings over towards the peg and then push that peg in while you're turning it. Push it in while you're turning it. That way your, your, your pegs won't slip once you get them tight. Okay, so I'm not putting a lot of tension on these strings, but now my bridge is, is held in fairly well. Now it's okay for me to put some tension on my other strings, okay? So I'm gonna go to my D string, and I'm gonna wind it on the string, this peg properly. I'm gonna go over towards the, the peg, because I want the, the string to wind towards the scroll box, and I'm pushing this peg in while I'm turning it. So I'm pushing it in while I'm turning it, okay? And I'm making sure I line the, the string up with the, the notch on the bridge and the notch on the, uh, the, the uh, nut, okay? Okay, now I'm going to tighten the A string, okay? So I'm gonna make sure I'm winding it again towards the scroll box, getting that string on the notch on the bridge and the notch on the, uh, the nut. Okay, so now I have a little bit of tension on all strings. It's holding up my bridge just fine. So now at this point, I'm gonna check the alignment. I'm gonna use these fingers here, and I'm gonna check the alignment of my bridge, make sure it's in between those notches, and I'm gonna lean it back a little bit. I'm gonna put this little piece of plastic on the bridge so that string doesn't bite into that bridge. So I'm leaning that bridge back a little bit because when I tighten these strings, it's gonna pull it forward. We want the back of the bridge to be a 90 degree with the top of the violin, okay? That's our, that's our end goal. So now I'm just gonna tighten the strings. E. Now I'm gonna check that bridge again. It's pulled it forward quite a bit, so now I'm gonna just do a final alignment on that bridge using these two fingers. Make sure it's in between my notches, and I got a 90 degree on the back of the bridge with the top of the violin, All right? Okay, and I'm 
done. And now I've got my new tailpiece on there. So guys, I hope this video helped out. And uh, you know, if you have any other questions or comments, just put them uh, below in the comment section. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. I'm doing a lot of videos these days. And you know, hit that uh, little bell uh, so you get a notification you know, every time I do a new video. And don't forget, you know, here at Kennedy Violins, you know, we're all players and teachers. So we're always happy to answer any of your questions anytime. Thanks.